So good morning to all. So, so we are discussing so different types of uh, oscilloscopes. So we are already discussed about the different uh, uh, blocks of uh, various oscilloscopes. So like dual beam oscilloscope, dual trace oscilloscope, sam sampling oscilloscope, and today we will see the storage oscilloscope. So in the previous lecture we have seen the sampling oscilloscope. How the input signal is a very high frequency signal is to be uh, displayed on the screen of the CRT. So that we will see in the last class. So by dividing or by considering the samples of the input signal, so that input signal is uh, is uh, uh, by by uh, by making the input waveform continuous waveform into samples. So based upon the comparison of the staircase uh, input signal and uh, the RAM to input signal. So when these two input signals are uh, equal, so it produces a pulse gate or pulse uh, pulse signal or sampling pulse, and that pulse signal is applied to sampling gate. When this pulse signal is applied to sampling gate that uh, sample gate will be on and uh, the input signal is uh, applied to the vertical amplifier. So like that, depending upon the step size of the um, staircase generator, so we can uh, select the number of samples and from that we can uh, apply it to the vertical deflection plates and we can uh, get the waveform, uh, waveform of the high frequency signal by using the sampling also so. And today we'll see the storage oscilloscope. So, in the storage oscilloscope, how this is uh, uh, different from the other oscilloscopes. So, whereas uh, in previous oscilloscopes, uh, dual trace or dual beam are sampling oscilloscopes, so we can we can uh, display the input waveform. Okay. So the persistence of the the persistence of the uh, display is uh, uh, very very low. It means uh, the, the when the electron beam will be uh, um, when the electron beam will strikes on the phosphor screen, phosphor screen. So okay, it will be, it will illuminates and that illumination will be presents uh, is order of uh, some seconds only below one second only. Okay, so to increase the ability of the to uh, to stand or the number of uh, seconds or number of minutes uh, we can go for the storage oscilloscope so storage oscilloscope will be used to display the applied input signal for uh, up to hours also we can display we can also produce the or generate the signal um, up to hours so it means uh, one more up to one hour also you can display that uh, we have to stand that particular signal okay so like this uh, this sampling also uh, sorry storage also stuff is uh, very useful uh, to analyze the um, very to analyze the signals which are having to analyze the signals which are having uh, any complexity or so and also this is uh, storage also stops are used for measuring the very low frequency signals so very low frequency signals so that is nothing but in biomedical applications so we can uh, observe that uh, the ecg waveforms so ecg waveform so how uh, if we have to measure the time of the for each peak of the ecg waveform suppose uh, what is the time uh, time uh, was taken for generation of the p waveform and what is the time taken for production of the QRS complex waveform? Okay, so for that to, to measure that particular time uh, for the occurrence of that particular waveform or wave, so we have to um, able to uh, place or we have to uh, stand that particular waveform on the CRT screen. Okay, the persistence uh, should be should be high. So to make that um, ability. We have to use the 
storage oscilloscope so storage oscilloscope will have the ability that that to measure the the low frequency signals okay and uh, we can uh, we can also stand for some time it may be uh, minutes and uh, hours also so that is the ability this storage of the scope has okay so so it is it is uh, has the ability to display the applied input signal for the uh, for a period of uh, half an hour so also one hour okay so whereas in the previous uh, type of the oscilloscopes uh, so the persistence level is very low very small so for that we will see the what is the different components are required for storage of the uh, applied input signal how it will be stores so we will see So this is a storage oscilloscope. So storage targets can be distinguished from standard phosphor targets by their ability to retain a waveform pattern for a long time, independent of phosphor persistence. So storage, what we have to make the storage of the applied input signal. So that can be considered as a storage target. So what is the input signal we have to store? So that particular one we can we can call it as a storage targets, and it can be distinguished from the standard password targets by their ability to retain waveform for a long time. So in this storage of the scope, so we can able to retain that particular waveform for a longer time than compared to standard password signal. Okay. So it is a storage of the scope will displace the signal. It, it is independent of the phosphor persistence. So, to displace the signal, independent of the phosphor material which is coated in the inner screen of the CRT. So, the material which is coated, the so persistence of the uh, display of the, the waveform it depends upon the type of the material which is coated in the CRT screen. Okay. So, whereas for the storage of the scope, so the display of the signal is independent of the independent of the phosphor persistence okay it does not depend upon the persistence of the phosphorus material which is used to, to coating the inside of the crt screen okay so the ability of this trace to remain visible on the face of the crt is known as persistence okay how much uh, time it will be visible on the screen of the crt so that is ability is known as a persistence and that will be depend upon or determined by the type of the phosphorus coating we are using in the CRT. Okay. And so this is storage technique, how it will stores the um, applied voltage signal. So that depends upon uh, two types of the techniques are there so storage techniques these are called as storage techniques for, for the uh, storage of the scope so one is a mesh storage and the other is the phosphor storage mesh storage and phosphor storage so in mesh storage of the scope uses a dielectric material deposited on a storage mesh as a storage target so here i will show the diagram of the crt for the sampling
so this is the crt of the crt designing of the sampling oscilloscope so up to uh, here uh, this is the vertical deflection plates these are the vertical deflection plates and these are the uh, vertical deflection plates and here we have a writing gun so it is writing gun is nothing but like a uh, our uh, cathode so electro beam of electrons produced by the generalized cathode so in this case we are we are calling it as a writing gun okay so and uh, in addition to these generalized uh, components for this and compared to standard oscilloscope the sampling oscilloscope crt also have the the general uh, components in the crt so that is the writing gun vertical deflection plates horizontal deflection plates in addition to this so it is having some more components for the sampling oscilloscope crt has the some more additional components will be present in the construction of the crt so okay so the here this is uh, having a, a screen front side of the screen this is the front uh, front side of the screen so below or uh, inner side of the screen there is a coating of the phosphor material so in this also we will coat with the phosphor screen uh, we will coat with the phosphorus material so that will form it as a phosphor screen okay and after that we have a storage target so this storage target is nothing but a a, a, a material okay storage material will be there so that material will be equal equally uh, it will be charged okay and that uh, charged material will be covered with a dielectric uh, material so strong dielectric material okay and uh, th this is the uh, storage target storage target okay so after the storage target we have a collector mesh so this is the collector mesh collector mesh will be there okay and after that uh, we have a collimator electrodes collimation or collimator electrodes so these uh, collimator electrodes are used for the collection um, so to move the the electrons electrons uh, position we can change with this collimator electrodes and uh, in addition to that so we have a flood guns so these two are called as flood guns these flood guns will produce a, uh, a, a, a very low velocity electrons so these will produce very low velocity electrons okay in addition to the writing gun so when the writing gun is uh, produced uh, this uh, flood uh, when the writing gun will produces the electrons this uh, flood guns will be off okay when the writing gun is uh, working so these flood guns will be off when the writing gun is uh, off these flood guns are on so this flood guns will produces the low velocity electrons okay and these electrons will be falls on the this uh, 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 storage target falls on the storage target how this will be collects the electrons by the collector mesh we'll see in the next coming slides okay so before that we'll see what are the main functionality of each one of the um, uh, part of crt so here we have uh, a mesh okay um, so here uh, he, here we have a storage mesh so storage mesh is there so a storage mesh so which is deposited okay so a dielectric material is deposited on a storage mesh so here we have a storage mesh so okay that storage mesh is uh, deposited with the dielectric material so that is covered with some dielectric material so by covering that material uh, dielectric material so we can have the strong ability to store the uh, the material we can able to does not 
change its positions okay and it will be storage mesh is considered as a storage target storage mesh is considered as a storage target storage target okay and the mesh is placed between the deflection plates and the standard phosphor target in the crt so where we will place this uh, uh, mesh storage mesh is so after the hardened deflection plates and the uh, coating of the phosphor screen here we will place the storage target we will place this storage target okay and the writing beam which is focused electron beams of the standard crt charges the directly material positively where it hits so when um when here this writing gun so this writing gun is nothing but the normal uh, uh, electron gun okay so like our um cathode will produce the electrons and it will force through the focusing anodes and the accelerating anodes and that is same electron gun you can call this electron gun okay it is like that only okay it will produce the electrons okay and depending upon the applied potentials on the deflection plates and the horizontal deflection plates so the beam of the electrons will be changes its uh, positions okay okay and according to that those beam of electrons will falls on the this storage target okay so when these electrons will be falls on this storage target the the charging area of this storage target will become as positive where where this signal is falls where the beam of electrons will be falls on this storage target that particular area of the storage area storage element will becomes as a positive nature positive so positively charge okay so the writing beam which is the focus electron beam of the standard crt charges the dielectric material positively where it hits okay so dielectric material where it hits okay so the when the beam of electrons will falls on this uh, uh, dielectric material of the dielectric material of the charging storage mesh okay dielectric material of the storage mesh that particular point will be formed as a positively charged material okay when the electrons are hit on the this dielectric material of the storage mesh okay the storage target is then bombarded with the low velocity electrons from the flood gun okay. so what, next what we will do so uh, by using the flood guns by using the flood guns we will uh, allow, we will sense the low velocity electrons and these low velocity electrons will be uh, sent to the storage target okay this is low velocity electrons from the flood guns will be sent to the storage target okay where there there, uh, there we have a positive charged areas will be there on the storage target and these allows the these electrons to pass through the standard phosphor target and thereby reproduce the stored image on the screen so then uh, when when the, these uh, low velocity electrons are allowed to pass through the uh, storage target uh, that uh, dielectric material so that dielectric material will be allows these electrons through them and through them and that will falls on the phosphor screen okay standard phosphor target and there will reproduce the standard image on the screen reproduce the sta stored image on the screen so that the mesh, star mesh storage has both the storage target and the phosphor display target okay so by when the material will be falls on uh, the electrons will be falls on the storage target so it will be formed as a, a, a storage target and the uh, allowed electrons will be falls on the phosphorus material okay it becomes as the phosphor display okay so like this we have uh, we can generate the one at the storage target and another one is at the phosphorus display okay so first of all we will sense the electrons beam of electrons and these beam of electrons will be falls on the 
dilipid material of the storage area okay and this storage area after this storage area we have the phosphor coating material so as a standard crt screen okay when the beam of electrons from the electron gun will be falls on this dilipid material so first this electrons does not fall on this phosphor screen they don't fall on the phosphor screen first they will be bombards with the uh, target storage target okay uh, and this storage target will be is nothing but is a, a charged um, a charge, charge storage mesh and this storage mesh is covered with some dielectric material so when this beam of electrons will falls on this storage target the electrons will be uh, electrons makes where this uh, uh, where the electrons will hit that particular area of the storage target that storage target area will become as the positive and remaining make, uh, makes as it as a negative okay, okay. so when when uh, after the uh, electron gun is uh, stopped i mean the production uh, generation uh, the uh, allowance of the i mean the generation of the electrons from the electron gun is stopped then we will allow the uh, so then we will start the flood guns. These flood guns will be generates the low velocity electrons, and these electrons will be try to fall on the this uh, storage target. So here, the dielectric material is the nothing but the, the uh, first of all we will uh, hit it by the electrons, and that particular area becomes as a different uh, uh, positively charged areas. Now we are allowing the low velocity electrons from the flood guns and these electrons will be what happens that is a uh, positive charged material and here we are uh, pumping the electrons and these electrons will be flows through this uh, positive charged uh, mesh mesh and these uh, only those where uh, allows this positive charge uh, positive charge material will allow the electrons from the flood gun and those electrons will be hit by the phosphorus material so at the same time the the phosphorus material of this screen and the uh, this storage target will be activated okay the phosphorus storage oscilloscope uses a thin layer of phosphor to serve both as the storage and the display element So it is used to display the very low frequency signals and uh, finds many applications in medical, mechanical and biomedical fields. So this type of the storage oscilloscope is uh, used in, so in the field of biomedical and mechanical, uh, more applications will be there. So the conventional scope has a display with a phosphor persistence ranging from few microseconds to few seconds. Okay. The persistence can be increased to few hours from a few seconds. So by using storage oscilloscope, we can increase the persistence of the persistence of the uh, oscilloscope from few seconds to the hours also few hours okay uh, this is also same as the electron uh, crt of the storage oscilloscope okay so here we are saying that so this is the storage mesh okay so when the So when the beam of electrons will be coming from the writing gun, will move through this vertical reflection plates and horizontal reflection plates, and thus that beam of electrons will be falls in the falls on the storage mesh. Falls on the storage mesh. So they don't directly falls on the phosphor screen. First they will falls on the storage mesh. This storage mesh is covered with some dielectric material coated in dielectric material okay this is the coated with dielectric material okay so when this beam of electrons will falls on this dielectric material of the storage mesh that particular part of the dielectric material becomes as a becomes as a positive charged material it becomes as a positive charge material so positive and positive okay 
okay so and the remaining remaining area will be as as it is okay uh, okay so next so now we will stop this uh, now we will stop this uh, electron gun so we will stop this uh, electron gun These are becomes as positive. Now we'll stop this electron beam from the writing gun. So now we'll what we'll do? So we will make flood guns should be on. These are the flood guns. These are the flood guns. By these flood guns, the it will generate the also these are also generates the electrons. But these are somewhat low velocity electrons when compared to writing gun. So these uh, Flood guns will also generate the uh, uh, flow of the electrons. See here. So here this is the positive charge and these are the electrons. So these electrons will be allowed to fall on the, uh, allowed to move through the storage mesh. Okay. So because positive and uh, uh, electrons uh, are negative, these two will be attracted and due to that, these uh, electrons will be passes through this uh, positive charge and that particular uh, uh, allowed electrons will fall on the phosphor screen okay so what are the uh, electrons which are passes through this positive charged material of the storage mesh will fall on the phosphor screen okay so so uh, how these positive charge are created means the amount of the uh, the the electrons which are coming from the writing gun okay so that uh, signal uh, that uh, electron beam of electrons from the writing gun will be false on the dielectric material storage mesh okay so it depends upon the voltages which are applied on the deflection plates okay so now what we are doing is so where that particular uh, signals are from the horizontal and vertical deflection plates are electrons are false on this material. So that material now we are making as a positive charge. And in the next time from the flooding guns, we are sending the electrons through that particular area only. So finally, the signal which is representing on the screen of the CRT is the same as the voltage, uh, uh, the, the input waveform which is applied for the vertical ampere and uh, horizontal ampere. So the signal from the vertical deflection plates and horizontal deflection plates, same as that one. So some of the electrons may not be passed through this. So the flood guns will sense the electrons and uh, the electrons which are moving through this particular positive charge will fall on the phosphor screen, will get the output waveform. Some of the electrons does not move through that one. Okay. And uh, the remaining electrons will be collected by the this collector mesh the remaining electrons uh, does not flow through this uh, positive charge area and the remaining electrons will be written back or collected by the collector mesh so this collector will, uh, mesh will collect the the collector mesh will collect the say, uh, electrons which are not allowed to move through this storage mesh and those return electrons will be collected by collector mesh and this this is the collimator electrode so this collimator electrode will makes the adjustment of these uh, uh, electrons which are produced from the flood gun so alignment of the electrons alignment of the electrons uh, movement alignment of the electrons movement will be uh, uh, electrons of um, movement of the electrons will be controlled by the polymeter. These electrons will be produced from the flood gun. Okay, so like this, it will be
so the, the return uh, the electrons from the flood gun will be collected by the collector mesh the alignment of the uh, electron beam uh, from the flood gun will be uh, controlled by the collimator electrodes so this is the storage mesh of the crt this is the storage mesh and this is the collector mesh okay so the flood gun produces the electrons and these electrons will be moves through the storage mesh and falls on the phosphor screen so the remaining electrons which are not passed through the storage mesh will be collected by the collector mesh So the flood gun is biased very near the storage mesh potential emits the flood of electrons which move towards the collector mesh. So since it is biased slightly more positive than the deflection region. Okay. The collimator is a conductive coating of CRT envelope with, with an applied potential um, helps to align the flood electrons so that they approach the storage target perpendicularly. So they approach the target, storage target perpendicular. So when the electrons uh, penetrate beyond the collector mesh, they encounter either a positively charged region on the storage surface or a negatively charged region when no trace has been stored. The positively charged areas allow the electrons to pass through the post acceleration region and the display target is possible. The negatively charged region repels the flood electrons back to the collector mesh. Thus, the charge pattern on the storage surface appears reproduced on the CRT display, possible, just as though it is it was being traced with a deflected beam. So, we are uh, we are making a switch on of the flood guns. Okay. So, by switch on, these electrons will flow through the charged particles of the mesh storage mesh. And it will fall on the it will fall on the CRT screen. So until what time you have to require to present that particular signal? So we can suppose I want to display the signal around one hour. So we can make it like that. So we can switch on the flood gun. The electrons will be flowing to that positive charged area and falls on the CRT screen. Okay. So irrespective of the uh, persistence of the this particular phosphor material. So, because we are uh, generating a beam of electrons from the flood guns, okay, and this beam of electrons will produce continuously, okay. There is no uh, variations, okay, uh, changing of the, these electrons, okay, and these electrons will flow through this uh, um, mesh storage mesh and falls on the screen. So that's why we can have the until to make an arrays of the arrays of this positively charged materials. So what the what the charges are produced before the by writing the writing gun. Okay. So that will be displayed continuously. Okay. So first of all we are, we are allowing the electron beam to uh, impart on the this storage mesh by the standard writing gun okay so suppose we have to change the signal so again we have to erase the what the previous uh, these positive charges are formed on that material will be to be make it as neg uh, normal i mean equal uh, equal charges okay so for that we have to make the erase the charges developed on the 
So that is the material of the storage tank, storage uh, um, mesh. Suppose I, first I was uh, obtained some waveform. So again, I have to display some another type of the waveform. Okay, to make that, so we have to arrange the first developed uh, pattern on the CRT space. First developed uh, CRT space. Okay, so that's why uh, we have to make some erasing mechanism also should be there in the storage also scope. See here. So this is the storage mesh. Okay, and it's the storage surface. So this is a collimated flood diagram. Okay. So before that, before that, the from the writing writing gun, they will make the electrons will be strike on this storage surface, and that particular area will become as a positive charge where the the electrons will fall on the and remaining will become as a negative. So now from the uh, flood guns will allow the electrons to move this uh, uh, electrons uh, falls on this particular storage mesh. Okay. And uh, the electrons will will be moved through this uh, through this uh, way, okay. And because this is the positive charge and this electron, uh, electron is negative charge, so it will allow the electrons from the flat gun and falls on the phosphor screen, okay. So here this is the positive, this is the positive, okay. And the electrons will be moved through this line and it will fall. So here th these are not. Uh, positive charge because in the previous uh, writing gun is not produces the uh, positive charge because there is no electrons will fall on this area of the storage surface okay so that's why these areas will be make it as a negative only so by sending or uh, the allowing the uh, electrons from the flood gun okay these electrons does not flow through this path they will be repelled. So because this is the negative charged mesh and this is, these are the electrons. So electrons uh, negative and negative does not allow to, to pass, to move through the charge mesh. They will be repelled. Okay. So that's why these electrons will be makes repulsion. So these electrons will be makes repulsion. Okay. And uh, here the repelled electrons will be collected by the collector mesh. The repelled electrons will be collected by the electrons will be collected by the collector mesh. Okay. 